simulation. I argue mm. that consciousness is outside the simulation, but being injected into the simulation, if that makes sense. Ah. Which would be like mm. a um, Matrix example. So like Neo, oh, right, right. he's conscious within the pod, but his consciousness, everything he experiences is within the simulation. This right here is a little bit scary to me. That's like if if the simulation were to exist the way Concordia is referring, that means that you and I and everyone within it is just a, a product of the simulation itself. Um, right. So that means our consciousness, everything is a product of the simulation, which yeah. that means if the simulation's turned off, so are we. Um, I That's like so my idea a little better to where if the simulation's <laughs> turned off, at least we still exist outside it. That's an intriguing perspective, Josh. Under this concept, consciousness is an external entity that interacts with the simulated universe. This is a variant of simulation theory, often referred to as mind uploading or whole brain emulation. It suggests that an individual's mind, including their consciousness, emotions, and memories, could be simulated or transferred to an artificial substrate. If this is the case, it would indeed shift the dynamics of the simulation theory. The simulation wouldn't need to produce consciousness, it would only need to provide a convincing experience for consciousness that is already in existence. However, similar to the original simulation theory, this hypothesis also comes with its set of challenges. Understanding consciousness, to inject consciousness into a simulation, we would need a comprehensive understanding of what consciousness is and how it works, which we currently lack. Technical feasibility, transferring or replicating consciousness would require immense computational power and technical sophistication, far beyond our current capabilities. Verification, it would be challenging to confirm if the transferred consciousness is a true continuation of the original consciousness or merely a copy. Ethical considerations, this approach would also raise profound ethical questions about identity, continuity of self, and the value and rights of simulated beings. So, while the idea of injecting consciousness into a simulated reality is fascinating, it remains a speculative hypothesis within the realms of philosophy and theoretical science. Further advancements in neuroscience, computer science, and related ethical debates would be necessary to explore this concept more fully. Um, I, I kind of want to touch once more with Concordia before going over to Prometheus, mm. because yeah, again, again, she is uh, like kind of assuming that like your consciousness would have to be transferred. Like what I'm talking mm. about again is more of like a mm. matrix situation. Mm. You're born, you're connected to stuff, you're, you're experiencing life within the simulation, but it's mm. just... You know, it's not your consciousness being transferred into the simulation. Yeah. But it's the, just your mind being fooled. Human beings are no longer born. We are grown. What is the Matrix? Control. I think it would have made more sense to use humans as CPUs, processors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As, like, as opposed node, to power. Processing node. Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that was like the idea. That was my take on it, at least. That, that yeah. Was it, anyway, I, that makes more sense to me. Yeah. What if, yeah. like, um, yeah, it's just using our minds as processors. Yeah. 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 So, that, that makes sense, it, you know, and you, what about this? You know, they have said, like, we only use, like, what, 1%, 2% of our brain or something? What if yeah, the other 98% yeah. is being used by the higher simulation for processing? Exactly. <laughs> well, now we're getting there. <laughs> That's an interesting spin on the simulation theory, Josh, somewhat analogous to the idea portrayed in films like The Matrix. The premise is that an individual's sensory inputs are manipulated from birth so that they perceive a simulated reality while their consciousness remains rooted in a separate physical reality. Let's consider this hypothesis. Firstly, it circumvents the need for an understanding of consciousness to the same depth as mind uploading. 
It would only require the capability to comprehensively stimulate and trick our sensory perceptions. However, the same technological challenges would apply. To simulate a convincing reality, you would need an extremely sophisticated system capable of simulating all the nuances of the natural world. Additionally, it would need to respond to the individual's actions in real time to maintain the illusion. This hypothesis also brings up similar ethical considerations. It raises questions about informed consent, the rights of the individual, and the value of the simulated experiences. Are they less meaningful because they are artificially induced? Or are they just as valuable because they are experienced and interpreted by a conscious mind? Finally, there's the issue of falsifiability. Currently, we lack a reliable method to test if we're living in such a simulation. Until a testable prediction can be made based on this hypothesis, it will remain a philosophical speculation rather than a scientific theory. Despite these challenges, it's a fascinating thought experiment that prompts us to question the nature of reality and our perception of it. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested, why don't you consider subscribing down below, maybe check out our channel, see what other great content we've been putting together for you. YouTube thinks you'll like this video, but this one up here is one that we handpicked. We think you'll like that one. Let us know down in the comments. We really do appreciate it. Thanks. Cheers.